Okay, so I'm Susan Brooks, and I have two separate roles at Oxford Brooks University. So for half my time, I'm a professor of cell biology. So I'm an active researcher, I'm interested in cancer biology, and I'm involved in various research projects around that. And also I teach the undergraduates um, on topics around health and disease and, and those sorts of things. The other half of my time, I'm director of researcher development for the university. And in that role, I'm, I oversee all of the um, transferable skills and professional development activities for anybody who does research in the university. So all of our research students and all of our staff that do research across the whole university. So it's a very uh, diverse job. It's very busy. It's very, very interesting. And it's very interesting bringing together those two very disparate um, roles, I suppose. And more recently, you've been involved in founding a spin out with some of your colleagues. Can you tell us um, how that came about, what your involvement is there as well, please? So <clears throat> I have recently been involved in uh, founding a spin out. It's been a very interesting journey. Uh, it started really as a result of for many years, I've been working along with two academic colleagues who actually are very interested in very, very different things to me. But we've been involved in some collaborative research projects together. And quite recently, we got some unexpected and some really, really interesting results. And we realized that um, there was a lot of potential there, both in terms of the research and the kind of the intellectual activity, but also potentially that um, it could be something that was commercially interesting. And so we were encouraged by the university initially to patent, to put in a couple of patent applications around what we've discovered, and then to go forwards with a view to looking into whether there, there might be sort of commercial um, potential there. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, we got involved in the Innovate UK iCure programme. Um, and that was very, very interesting in terms of teaching us a lot about business and entrepreneurship and also putting us in contact with potential investors. And we also got some funding as a result of that to uh, set up the, the spin out. Uh, and we also got involved in the Oxford Academic Health Science Network Accelerator Programme, which is a similar sort of idea, but it was a programme that introduced us to business ideas and potential um, investors and that kind of thing. And so that's where we're at at the moment, really, that the, the spin out is really just spinning out, just starting to happen, which is really exciting. And at what point in your career did you start thinking about commercialising your research? Did it kind of come about because of some discussions you've had with people or has it been on your mind for a while? Well, I've been involved in research for 30 years and actually quite early on in my research career, I was involved in a number of commercial projects. So I was involved in a number of projects that were aimed at developing um, uh, commercial aspects of, of the research that I was interested in. And to be honest, at the time, I didn't like those projects as much as the ones that were pure kind of, you know, research in terms of an intellectual exercise. Um, and then really it was uh, an unexpected finding in the research relatively recently that sort of set us on this path of setting out this spin out. So really in the last year or 18 months, I've really become interested in this. So a reoccurring theme across our research has been the importance of finding a good team and getting some good co-founders. So can you tell, tell us a little bit more about how that team came together and the role that each of you played in developing probably firstly the research and this finding that you, you're talking about, but also in developing the business? Sure. So, um, so my co-founders are really two uh, members of academic staff who I've worked alongside for a long time and have been doing some research projects with. And we come from quite different backgrounds and we've got very different interests and different expertise. And that's worked really well in terms of the research projects. And as a result of that um, collaboration, we have made some discoveries that were really unexpected and I think none of us would have made individually. So scientifically, it's worked really, really well. In terms of the spin out, it's also working really, really well because we've got very, very different personalities and different 
um, ways of looking at things, I think. So one of my co-founders is uh, full of ideas. He has ideas sparking off him all of the time. And some of the real innovations that we've made have been as a result of following ideas that he's had. But I don't think he'll mind me saying that he's not so good at seeing those ideas through and coming to a, a kind of a, uh, a conclusion. Uh, whereas my other co-founder is much more pragmatic, much more able to see the bigger picture and to sort of see where we need to go for the, the next step in the, in, in the process. And so those different kind of ideas and approaches have worked really, really well, as well as us bringing different expertise in terms of the actual science and so on. I think also something that for me has been tremendously important is that uh, both my co-founders I've worked with for a long time, I know them really well, and I trust them absolutely uh, in terms of, I think they're very honorable and, and good people who are gonna be great to work with in, the, in this new venture. And also I like them very much and we all get on very well. And I think that's been tremendously important too. Have you each um, allocated yourselves roles within the spin out yet? Because I know from some of our research that it's getting the idea of the different roles that are available for different researchers to play to their strengths, that not everybody wants to or is the best place to be a CEO of a spin-out company. Yes, I mean, so far, so far, the different roles within the company have worked very well in that um, I think right from the start, we were all aware that we were interested in different aspects of it. So one of my co-founders is very, very interested in the, in the kind of the science and the ideas and, and the... Uh, the, the amazing things that we can do uh, in terms of pushing forward the technologies and so on. I'm very interested in the science, but I'm not so interested in the business side of things. My other co-founder is very, very interested in the idea of setting up a company and being involved in the actual, you know, kind of business side of, of things. So, so far, those different um, interests have, have worked together very well. Uh, so yeah, I think that that idea of everybody having different roles is really important. And for me, that was very important as well, because right from the start, I was aware that I wasn't so terribly interested in the nuts and the bolts of the business and in, you know, talking to the investors and that kind of thing. I was much more interested in the science and the ideas behind it. So um, yeah, the idea that you can have different uh, involvements, I think, is really important and shouldn't put people off, I suppose. And you mentioned there that um, there is a role to play in speaking to investors already and that you've had some IQ funding. So what has your experience been with securing funding at these early stages um, and also maybe recognising that it's an, an ongoing challenge? Yeah, so I think securing funding has been and it is the biggest challenge. So we were very fortunate that we took part in the IQ programme and that um, um, we, we managed to get some uh, investment from IQ as a result of that. But uh, being able to access that investment, we have to have um, some match funding from industry. And so um, we've been spending a lot of time looking for investors, looking for businesses that will that will support us and having those conversations. And yeah, it's been it's been very hard and it's been very time consuming. It's been quite exciting and quite interesting. But um, but yeah, I think that's going to be a big challenge going forwards as well, um, you know, in as time goes on, you know, getting people involved in terms of the investment in the, in the company, as it, hopefully as it grows. You mentioned there as well that, that seeking investment has actually been a part, quite a time consuming part of the role. How have you adapted with that additional workload on top of everything else that you're doing? Not very well. <laughs> so no, it's been, it's been really difficult actually. Um, for my co-founders, probably more than me, because they've been much more involved in, in the IQ programme and um, in uh, talking to investors and so on. And really, it has been enormously, enormously time consuming because there's been an awful lot to learn in terms of this being a whole new universe for us that, that we were all very new to. Uh, but also, you know, preparing for conversations with the investors, preparing the presentations and the pitches and that kind of thing very very time consuming and also having to kind of adapt to a very different way of thinking and, and a different language almost when you start to talk to investors rather than talking to fellow scientists in your field so i think that really is a challenge and of course it hasn't helped by the fact that this all happened during the pandemic when um you know we've all as academics been terribly busy anyway you know trying to adapt to doing everything online and all the rest of it so yeah it's been a perfect storm of i mean challenges but excitement as well 
Could you talk a little bit more about some of that excitement and all the highlights for you? You know, what is it that's keeping you motivated to do this and, and as you go along? So I think for me, the motivation more than anything else is that I've been involved in cancer research now for, as I say, 30 years or something like that. And, you know, I've, I've published some really nice papers and I found some really interesting things out. And hopefully that is of benefit to the community and other people have benefited from the, the kind of groundwork, I suppose, in those papers and in those discoveries. But in all honesty, you know, a whole career of cancer research and not a single cancer patient has lived a minute longer as a result of, you know, what I've been working on. And it's only by that kind of translation of the research in the laboratory to getting something that perhaps is of commercial value and clinical value by which, you know, you make any sort of impact. So I'm very inspired by that sort of idea of translating the exciting research that I've been involved in in the laboratory into something that actually potentially could be clinically useful and could actually make a difference to patients' lives. Um, in terms of the highlights of the journey so far, I think one of the very uh, exciting things has been, you know, getting engaged in things like the iKill program, talking to investors and getting that very positive feedback that there is something there that other people are interested in and think could have potential. That's been very kind of um, validating, I suppose. Um, and also just the journey, you know, I mean, you know, it's been a whole, it's a whole new world and a whole new kind of project. And it's always motivating and exciting getting involved in something new. And this is definitely something very new for me. Your dual role as a research developer and also an academic entrepreneur does give you a unique perspective then. And I was wondering what you feel institutions could do to support more researchers into spin-outs or more, um, you know, more, you know, more general forms of commercialization. So yes, I mean, my dual role as uh, a researcher developer and as a researcher myself has given me a very interesting slant on this really in that, uh, it's come as a, as a, at a very um, good time in that in my, in my role as researcher developer, I've been involved over the last year or so in um, developing and launching a whole new suite of uh, workshops and support for entrepreneurship and um, IP and commercialization for researchers across the university. So I've sort of seen it in terms of this is something it would be useful for our researchers to know about, but at the same time seeing it from the other side as well of a researcher that needs that advice and training and, and help. So I think the university can and is providing, you know, training and workshops and support for this. Obviously, the Research and Business Development Office have staff and are very keen to support researchers in um, spin-ups and in commercializing their research and they've certainly been incredibly helpful uh, with our, our spin-out. Um, the big thing that I think is a barrier to uh, researchers getting involved in spin-outs and in commercialization is just that it's a massive learning curve, it's a whole new world and we're all so busy and it does take a lot of a lot of people's time so they really do have to have you know the motivation to do it but also somehow managed to find the time to do it. And I think the university probably could, uh, if, if they're serious about people going forward with commercialization of their research, you know, make sure that they're supported in that aspect of it as well. And finally, what is next for your spin out? Um, well, in the short term, we need to get some funding. So we're very busy talking to investors to try and get um, some match funding for the iCure money that, we, that we've already uh, obtained. And then that will hopefully be enough to get us through the next year or 18 months where we can really build on our initial research findings and really put ourselves in a strong position to go forwards with the company and to get more investment in order to kind of expand and to take that next step. But we'll see, we're just setting out on the journey, it's early days yet. 